nine things about Stalin. Nine things about Stalin. You've seen this slide already. You've seen this one already. The number is 56 to 62 million unnatural deaths. I'm going to show you in just the next couple of minutes where those populations come from, okay? Where those populations come from in terms of who, who is he killing? <laughs> Who's dying? Who's dying? <coughs> yes, that's exactly right. Okay, and I've given you some hints. The kulaks, the gulags, purges and famine. Okay. You have those things going on. All right. A little bit of bio on Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin. Okay. Come on. There you go. <laughs> Stalin is not his original name. Let me see if I can pronounce it. Yosef Yugashvili. Okay. Yugashvili. Okay. He was born into a poor family in Russian Georgia, rural Georgia. You could argue that he was a peasant. That's his roots, or pretty close. By age 21, he'd adopted Marxist ideas. Okay, there he is by age 21. Um, and he changed his name to Stalin, which literally means man of steel. Man of steel. Okay. At age 21, he was an atheist, a Marxist, and his nickname was Koba. Koba. In fact, there's a great book um, that just came out within the last couple of years or was reprinted called Koba the Dread, which walks you through, um, it's a very short book about the activity of Stalin as dictator. It's called Koba the Dread, and I think that was probably one of his nicknames. Okay. In 1902, he was arrested and sent to prison in Cyp Siberia. Um, it's viewed that this combination of his um, impoverished background, that that's what spurred his revolutionary ideas. But he was a dedicated doctrinaire Marxist as a young man. So when we read the Communist Manifesto, we do it as an intellectual exercise to look back. He did it as a political action to animate and to inform his actions as a revolutionary. Okay. So he um, came to power as an underling of Lenin, if you remember your Soviet history, 1917, the Russian Revolution, overthrows the Tsar. Stalin um, has great animosity toward the Tsars. In fact, he's arrested, there he is, um, he's arrested multiple times. He's arrested seven times for trying to overthrow and undermine the Tsars between 1902 and 1913. He was exiled six times. Five times he escaped from exile. Lenin ruled until 1924, and that's when Stalin came to power. He consolidated power and eliminated rivals. Here's one of his ideological works again. Um, we look and go, how influential were Marx's ideas? Uh, they were the ideas that Stalin embraced and tried to put into practice. Okay, so think about the advocacy to abolish private property, abolish marriage. Um, the violent overthrow of the bourgeoisie. That's what he was about, okay? That's what he was about. And he wrote Marxism and the National Question. That's 1913. So he was a published author, okay? Again, all about what are the ideas and how do they apply. And sometimes you think, well, you know, was it just a political movement? It was a political movement rooted in a very, um, uh, identifiable set of ideas written by Marx. In fact, if you read Lenin, if you read Stalin, if you read Trotsky, if you read the Soviet leaders, what would, Le what would Marx say? Marx was the, the, the point of reference. And how can we be in line and keep the doctrine of Marx in our new context? Okay. Um, point three. 
He was ruthless and paranoid. Ruthless and paranoid. <coughs> One of his main um, kind of rivals was Leon Trotsky. Leon Trotsky. Okay. Leon Trotsky, after Stalin took power, realized that he was on the outs and fled to Mexico City okay, for safety. He, it was already clear that uh, Stalin was eliminating his rivals, so he moved to Mexico City in the hopes that maybe he would be able to um, stay alive, first of all, but secondly, continue to advocate. He viewed Stalin as incorrectly interpreting Marx. So he was continuing to advocate for a different interpretation of Marx. So he was a rival to Stalin. And remember, Stalin was ruthless and paranoid. My son was in Mexico City over um, the holidays and went to visit Trotsky's flat in Mexico City. And I was so jealous. So he and I were, were sharing the story, and this is what it is. Um, on August 20th, uh, 1940, in his study in Mexico City, Trotsky was attacked um, by Ramon Mercator, who used an axe pick in the back of his neck to kill him. Okay. The blow to his head was bungled and failed to kill Trotsky instantly, as had been intended. And this is someone who found his body. I laid my raincoat on the table in such a way as to be able to remove the ice pick, which was in the pocket. I decided not to miss the wonderful opportunity that presented itself. The moment Trotsky began reading the article, he gave me my chance. I took out the ice pick from the raincoat, okay, the, 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 the poorly um, uh, uh, first attack on Trotsky, gripped it in my hand and with my eyes closed, dealt him a terrible blow on the head. And Trotsky was dead, but the idea that Stalin was so paranoid um, that uh, Trotsky was on the other side of the world. Uh, Stalin had full power in the Soviet Union and still. Stalin see, saw the need to track him down and kill him, an ice pick in the back of his head. Okay, so ruthless and paranoid, there he is, Trotsky is dead. Okay. Yeah. All right, ruthless and paranoid, here's his DACA in Sochi, okay? Um, as you look at this building, uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's painted green. It's paranoid and ruthless. It's painted green so that airplanes flying overhead could not see him. Okay, that's how paranoid he was. He was co concerned that the Allied forces would find him. Okay. Um, Stalin's summer residence stands on a hill hidden and slightly dilapidated among palms and fruit trees that lend the estate a Mediterranean atmosphere. You don't see the house painted in dark green camouflage colors until you're right by it. Okay. Stalin wasn't only concerned with bombardment when he was there at his getaway, at his DACA in Sochi. Just a little aside, what happened to the abolition of private property? Oh. Um, and there he was in his DACA. When he first got there, he insisted um, that all of the carpet be removed and be replaced by wooden floors so they could hear if anybody was sneaking up on him to kill him. That's how paranoid he was. Okay? And paranoia, in a lot of ways, characterizes and animates um, what he did with power when he finally had power in the Soviet Union. Okay. Oh, here's a little side note. Once his security arrangements were taken care of, Stalin could apparently let his hair down. Okay, so everything's safe. He's settled into his, his DACA. The main wing in the residence where visitors were taken contained a private screening room. A private screening room where the leader of the Soviet Union mainly watched Charlie Chaplin movies and westerns, and they had a billiard room. Okay, so um, western entertainment. Okay. Well, that's three. Ruthless and paranoid. Okay. And you could unpack this further about more details, certainly about the paranoid element.